praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
here tonight. Amen. Now we welcome you here. And I want you to feel comfortable to get up and praise God. Get up and give God some glory. Amen. Come and get your blessing. Amen. Now I was told that uh, Brother R.J. Madra, one of his co-workers, is here tonight. Will you raise your hand? All right. Praise God. All right. Amen. Well, we're so glad to have you. And all the others of you, praise God, will be introducing and amen others, amen, and recognizing you at the close of the service. All right? Amen. But now it's time for the work. Amen. from Wilson Mills Church of God. Amen. Praise God. This wonderful man of God, he's preached for us before. He preached for us last year in our tent revival. And we want you to stand now. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand. Let's stand. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. It is he who's going to bring the ultimate gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Receive Bishop Larry Hunt with a hand clap of praise. Amen. Give him praise, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Well, the good Lord is in this gospel tent this week. I'm just saying that I couldn't get here before tonight. But I'm telling you that devil's up to a whole lot of stuff. But I've got a message for the devil tonight. Did y'all hear what I said? I said, I got a message for the devil tonight. And it's going to encourage you once I tell him what he's got to have to do. Somebody say amen. I want to just give honor tonight to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank him for saving me. September the 5th, 1974. He sanctified me March the 19th, 1975. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. March the 23rd, 1975. And I'm so glad tonight that I'm still saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I appreciate Pastor Smith. Amen. For allowing us the opportunity once again to come back up to this gospel tent. I enjoy preaching on the tents. Amen. I enjoy preaching anywhere. Appreciate this pastor here, fine pastor, Pastor Hamilton. Appreciate her ministry. Appreciate Brother Jones, Brother Perry, Brother Keith. And all of the ministers of the that is here tonight. I have upon my shoulders tonight a responsibility. And I must get about the Father's business. Turn with me to the book of Job, chapter 20. The book of Job, chapter 20, verse 15. Now, if you'll help me preach tonight, we might get through in about 40 minutes. But if you drag your feet, it might take an hour and 40. We'll be through by 10. Amen. But you might as well have church since we drove this far to get here. There ain't no need in coming up here and tapping, tapping a little bit, you know, clapping a little bit and shouting a little bit and going home and saying, well, we had a good time. You ain't had a good time until you've been preached to and you received the word. Somebody say amen. Job chapter 20, verse 15, one verse of scripture. He hath swaddled down riches and he hath the Bible said, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Amen. I had a number of thoughts that were springing through my mind on the process of getting here tonight. But I've settled in, I feel like, on the message that God would help me to preach this evening entitled, Cough It Up. <coughs> Cough It Up. I've come here tonight with a message to tell the devil it's time for him to cough it up. You can be seated. You see, God sent me here tonight to preach to you. The devil has to cough up your goods. Your family members. Your finances. Your health. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me tonight? Now, I know we got this many folk gathering in this gospel on Friday night. We ought to have a little church. 
Them folks across the street over here, across the street over there, and behind me, sideways, and every other way around here, within 50 yards to 100 yards. That's the length of a football field. I'm telling you, everyone within 100 yards of this tent tonight ought to be able to hear us worship God. Somebody say amen. And if you're out there listening tonight under, under the shelter of your home, I want you to understand you're welcome to come over here right now. And then right now you can come. We'll stand up. We'll make a seat for you. If you'll just come, we'll give you a seat. Somebody say you're welcome. Amen. God told me tonight to come to this tent and preach to you tonight. Amen. Cough it up. In other words, I'm going to be talking about restitution. Amen. Restitution. I may not be talking to everybody under this tent tonight, but I can assure you, amen, before I sit down tonight, I'm going to be preaching to somebody under this tent tonight. You see, it is a time when you and I need to come together. We need to understand, amen, that, that we're getting together. And what I may say tonight, what I may preach tonight, might sound a little crazy to some people. It might sound a little offbeat, amen, for this service tonight, but I tell you, I've got a hold of God, and God's got a hold of me. And I'm looking, amen, I'm looking, and I'm feeling like everything has been taken away from me in the last several months. I'm telling you, I've been through some stuff. I've been through some battles. Amen, I've faced the devil, but I'm here tonight to tell you, I've got some battle scars, but I'm still on the feet. I've got some wounds, but I'm still preaching. I've got some difficulties, but I still love Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, amen, it's time to join out and claim it. Look that devil right square now and say, devil, it's time for you to cough it up. Did you hear what my text said tonight? My text said he has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again and God shall take, the Bible says, and cast them out of his belly. You see, I believe this night is the night for you and I to take back everything that belongs to us. You see, I want you to understand the devil don't want you to have your freedom. But not only did the devil don't want you to have your freedom, America, the leadership of this country, and I know where I'm at. I'm in black town, black country, preaching to the black gospel tent. Amen. Set up by black men and black women. Oh, y'all going to help me preach tonight? But we got some white folk here, we got some black folk here, and we got like two or three or four Indians. And we're going to get on the war path tonight and say, Devil, you've got to toss it up. I said, you've got to toss it up. Amen, I'm telling you, you've had our stuff too long. I said, you've had our children too long. You've had our stuff too long. Somebody's got to help me preach it up. I said, Devil, you've got to toss it up. defend ourselves. They want to invade our privacy. I'm talking about American society. They are even dictating to you and I, even what we're going to eat at school. How are you going to eat it? Am I preaching the right principle? They're dictating you what your children's going to eat in school. They don't have a choice. But you know what most of them children do? I know I go to my wife's school once in a while and have a little meal with her and I see them kids, they throw it in the trash can. Humans are made to eat what they like. Even if it ain't good for them. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach it tonight. Lord, have mercy. Listen, folks, I'm telling you, we live in a society today that they are taking away our rights, even to choose our own health care, our own physicians. I'm telling you, Obamacare is not going to work in this society. I'm about to have a happy fit up here. They're taking away our right when we go down the road. You got to buckle up or you get ticketed. Why should they make us? We should be able to have that choice. I shouldn't have to pull that thing across me every time I go down the road just because they demand that I do it. I ticket it. I don't want to pay no money, so I'm gonna. I ain't got the money to get them jokers. Come on, saints of God. I'm going to put my tithes and offer it in the church. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you. They're taking away and have taken away prayer out of school. Hmm? One step at a time, the devil is taken away from this society and you and I. But I'm telling you, devil, you got to cough it up shortly because I'm telling you, I'm listening for a sound and I'm looking for the Son of God to step out on the cloud. Our constitutional rights. 
Are you listening to me? They are becoming more and more strict on gun laws. The Second Amendment. And then on the First Amendment, they are restricting it. Our freedom. Right. It won't be long before they're going to come into the wee Pentecostal churches that preach against this homo right. and lesbianism. Right. And they're going to say, you can't do that no more. Right. Well, will y'all members come visit me? Yeah. Yeah. For being a pastor that'll preach the truth. Yeah. 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 Oh, God, help me, Jesus. They're becoming more and more controlling. The government is supposed to be a system of organization for its people. They're not supposed to be a higher level than the people that they're supposed to be serving. Leaders lead, not controlled. Shepherds lead, not demand the way you live. You have a choice, but a shepherd will lead you and preach to you and tell you what you're supposed to do in order to make it to heaven. But if you choose not to follow, you'll go to hell. And you won't have to lay in bed and not wonder about whether or not you're going there because the brother said, you can know that you know that you've been born again, that you've been washed in the blood, that you've been sanctified by the same blood and baptized with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling somebody in this place tonight that you need to understand that the devil is up to no good. Leaders are opposed to, amen, lead and not control. When our government is able to make decisions without the consent of the people, it should be considered constitutionally wrong. It should be unjust. But look at our government on June 22nd, 2015. Amen. In a long sought victory for the gay rights movement, the Supreme Court ruled by margin five to four. That Friday, the Constitution of America guaranteed a right and all the rights for same-sex marriage in every state of the union. Outside the Supreme Court, the police allowed hundreds, listen folk, hundreds of people waving rainbow flags and holding signs up to advance even on to the court plaza Amen. As those presented, amen, was present for the decision that had been streamed down, amen, the steps. And they were crying out, Love Jesus. has won. Devil, you're going to have to cough this mess up shortly. You're going to have to, you're going to get sick in your stomach. And you're going to vomit this up that you've done to America. Or you're going to help me preach here tonight. You see the crowd chanted, amen, as the courtroom witnesses threw up their arms in victory and remarks, even in the Rose Garden that day, President Obama welcomed the decision, saying it is affirmed that millions of, even America already believe in their heart has happened today. And he said, today we can say in all uncertain terms that we have made our union a little more perfect. I can, I can see that devil right now. He's getting sick at the stomach. He swallowed down these riches that he swallowed down and he's he's getting sick at the stomach. Are you helping me preach here tonight, saints of God? You see, what I want you to understand is so that today, amen, he allowed the homosexual flag, amen, of America, the homosexual flag of America. Listen to me, folk. I'm telling you here tonight that devil is a liar. He allowed the homosexual flag, amen, to, to, to fly beside of the United States flag of America. Amen. And he was, I'm telling you, he was just putting it in the face of America and especially you and I who are Pentecostal believers who believe in the power of the blood and who believe in the power of the cross but I'm telling that devil tonight your day is short your days are numbered your fiction will cost it up I said your fiction will cost it up you hear me saints of God I want you to understand that the rainbows amen to the White House there was a display on the very night that the gays got their rights. He turned the White House. Obama allowed the White House 
to be turned into a rainbow. Which is a mockery of the colors of God when he made a promise to you and I that this earth would never flood again. And he sent the rainbow. Amen. And so the devil is taking the colors of the rainbow and slapping it in the face of, of America and our society and saying, we gays, we lesbians, we're going to have the same colors of the rainbow. And look at the White House. It's shining in the colors of the rainbow. But Obama and the devil, let me tell you, they're fixing to cough it up. I don't have a racist hair on my head. Pull one up, brother. Ask him what it is. Are you racist? What did he say? No. Settles my case. You want to come into a court of law and try me? Get your judge. Get your lawyer. Because I'm telling you, mine is Jesus. And he knows my heart. He knows where I stand. He knows where I stand inside. I don't have no leg. Never have had it. When I grew up, I didn't see black. I didn't see white. I didn't see red. I saw people to play with. I said, I saw people to play with. Come on. It didn't matter whether it was a black boy, we played cowboys and Indians. And I always played the Indians. <laughs> Listen, folks. June the 29th, an edition of the Old Rowdy Factor. Amen. I got this off the net if you want to know where I got it. I got it off the net. I didn't get it off television. I didn't look at no O'Reilly factory. Come on. All right. <laughs> O'Reilly asked of a display. He said, what about the Americans who believe that the redefinition of marriage is not the job of the Supreme Court? Right. Right. You're right. Right. You're right. That's right. Come on. Right. Huh? Right. And he later said, the President Obama said, did and in your face traditional America when he began to put the colors of the rainbow upon the White House. And all this was transition, church, around the, the tragedy in South Carolina when that minister and senator was slain in his own church with several of his members. But listen to him, that's sad. Don't get me wrong here tonight, folks. I'm preaching what God, amen, told me to preach and the devil's getting ready to cough some stuff up. Amen. He's he's gulling it down and he's did this and he and he's shoving it in our face. But I'm telling you, I feel a move of the Holy Ghost about to take place even in America. Now you, you say you're gonna be a worldwide revival. No, honey. But I'm telling you, when people get together and 75 or 100 like we are here tonight, and we want to see a move of God, and we prayed and we fasted, we read the Bible, we feel right, we feel holy, and we're calling out to God, and we're doing like the sister read that song, even Psalms 150. Now I'm telling you, we need to praise the Lord. Everything that's under this tent tonight, everyone that has prayer, I said everyone that has prayer, you ought to be praising God. You ought to be right the time the Lord. I said you ought to be glorifying God. And if you do that, God will send out His power. But what disturbed me, the president, he went down to South Carolina Amen. To do the funeral. After four hours in the funeral, the president stood behind the podium and he bailed into the first verse of Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. And I'm saying, saved. He just glorified the homos and the lesbians. Now he's saying he's saved. Come on, I said, he's saved. He's just making words and singing a song and trying to look good to them black folk in the Methodist church. He said, the once was low, but now I'm found, but was blind, but now I said, and then the choir and the organist joined in with him. How in this world can a man stand up as a leader of the United States of America and sing amazing grace and be just glorify the gates by letting the White House be turned into the rainbow colors? I said the devil's going to have to cough it up. I said the devil's going to have to cough it up. Are you listening to me? I read in the book when I was preparing this message. And just in case you hadn't read it lately, let me read it to you. Romans 1, 24. What for God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between 
them selves. Come on, saints of God. This is what the president was glorifying. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who's blessed forever. Amen. Listen now. So this cause God gave them up. Amen. Unto vile affections. So even the women did change the natural use of that which is against nature. It is not natural for a woman to want to love on another woman. It is sinful. It is not natural for a man to want to kiss another man in the mouth. That's damnable. And sickly to my stomach. He's going to have to cough this up. I said he's going to have to cough it up. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the women burned in their own lust one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving unto themselves the recompense of, re-recompense of the hour which was me. And even as they did not like to restrain God in their knowledge. They did not want to restrain God in their knowledge. We're living in a sick society, folks. I'm an Indian. I wasn't raised in the woods. I was raised on a farm. Columbus did not discover America. My forefathers were here before he ever stepped foot on this ground. We taught them how to grow corn. My forefathers did. Y'all going to help me here. We taught them how to grow roosters, mama, and chickens. And I was raised on a farm, and I've never seen a rooster want to make love to another rooster. But I have seen a rooster. He may want to fight that other rooster to keep him off his hands. And away from his hands. Come on, saints of God. My daddy told me, my mama told me, son, we're going to have to kill some of the roosters. We got too many roosters, and the fight, we ain't got enough of him for all of them, so we're going to have to kill some of them. I know the God. I'm telling you, when God spoke to Noah and told him to put them animals on the ark, amen, we didn't see two, two lions go up on that ark together. We didn't see two billy goats go up there, two monkeys of the same sex. I'm going to have to stay over at that place. I go back over here. Y'all going to get tired of me Come over here? I don't want to hurt your ears, so I want to preach to you. Oh, baby, look at my I got to get my distance here. I got to get figure out where I can go and where I can't go. Hey, because I got a message this and I got delivered in about 20 more minutes here. Listen to me. I want you to understand here tonight that God wants us to understand the devil is getting sicker all the time. The more I preach tonight, the more the devil's getting sick. I'm telling some of you here tonight, under this tent, what you got to do is you got to stand on the word of God and you have got to do some frogging. You got to do some frogging. What that mean? You got to fully rely on God. The devil is stolen from you. He's cheated you. He's lied to you. He's took your stuff. I say to you, devil, you gotta cough it up. I say you gotta cough it up. You gotta frog. I say you gotta frog. And over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Right. Yeah. Amen. Verse 21, and God created great whales, every living creature that moved, which waters brought forth abundant after their kind. After their kind. Yeah. God knew what he was doing when he was making animals. He made a male animal and a female animal. For what? For reproduction. You know what this society is trying to do? They're trying to cut down production. And the way you do that is to get men loving men and women loving men and there'll never be no more children born. And the rest of us will die with diseases from all them homos and lesbians. But I've got news for that devil. I'm getting out of here. At the first sound 
of the first trump. Hey, I'm telling you, be not ignorant, my brother. Be not crazy. Be not sleepy. But I'm telling you, I want you to know there's a mystery going on. And there's a mystery about to take place. The Son of God, he's about to step out on the cloud of glory. I said he's about to step out on the cloud of glory. Attention. Yeah. And I ain't telling you when they come out, they're going to meet us. Uh, amen. About ground level. And in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're all going to be changed uh, and we're going to be out of here. Yeah. I said, we're going to be out of here. Yeah. Church, I'm trying to tell you, the devil loves talking up. You can be seated if you like. Thank you for your obedience. Listen, the Bible said in verse 23 of this text, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And the Bible says, And it was so. Yeah. And God made the beast yes. of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth. And there's some things that creep upon the earth I don't particularly like. But God didn't create them for me to particularly like them. Every creeping thing has got a purpose and a reason for being here. There ain't nobody in this, this tent tonight likes flies. You just love flies when they come around. You just want to reach up and grab them and say, come on, fly, let me hug you. No. Every time you see a fly, you get a fly swap. You get a book. You get a paper. You get something. You get your hand. Hey, man, I wrap them in the midair and squeeze them to the dining table. Amen. If you ain't never caught a fly, amen, in the middle, that would you hang you slow. You reflex, you're, you're reflex. You better get back to know someone that's got to speed you up because you got a low gear. Woo! Glory to God, hallelujah. Sometimes I think I ain't got no gears. I can burn them up. Listen, folks, let me must hurry here. And God said, let us make man in our in image. Let us. Who's us? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The Trinity. Amen. God's always had the Trinity with Him. Ever since nowhere came. Because God came from nowhere. He's always existed. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Son said to Father one day, He said, make me a body. I'll go down there with them folks under the gospel tent that's here tonight that's lost. Let me tell you, folks, if you're here tonight under this gospel tent that got you off the street, amen, they didn't waste their time going out to get you off the street. But you're wasting your time if you don't do something about it after they got you under the street. You're wasting your time. But I'm telling you, you don't have to leave here like you came under this tent. You can leave here with your name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you can know for a sure that amen, you're just as saved as I'm saved. Yes, I've been saved September the 